Hi everyone, I'm Kevin. Welcome to PCI Tech TV, where we pass on tech tips and new product information from PCI Geomatics. Today I'm joined by Guillaume Marin, who is our technical lead on uh, GXL system deliveries. And uh, Guillaume's going to talk to us about something uh, pretty interesting. It's a uh, implementation of GXL that we've done on the Amazon Cloud. So welcome to Tech TV, Guillaume. Well, thank you. Uh, so why don't we get into it? So I, I, what you've got here on the screen, it looks like is the Amazon uh, login screen. Yeah, so it's a main console where you control all your instances and computer in the Amazon cloud. So I pre-entered the pass login password. I'm just going to log in into that. Standard login password. So you can get to this anywhere. Just yes, internet, anywhere, yeah. Connection. Yeah, exactly. So here you are connected to the main, what they call dashboard basically give you an idea of what's going on your on your computer. Okay. What we're going to do is going to look more in details and exactly what we're doing. So I'm going to connect to the instances, which is really uh, what computer are running in your cloud at that moment. So there's a lot of things going on in there. Okay. So one thing of interest here is our uh, our main controller node that is running our software uh, on the cloud, which we, it's run our licensing as well. Okay. So we're going to connect to that computer because it's how I control. Our, our, our GXL in the cloud, it's through that computer. And we also have here down is uh, what we call processing node, GXLP nodes. It's basically the worker. It's what, they're the one doing the work on, uh, like you would have processing servers, mm -hmm. we call them nodes on the cloud. So the beauty is you can add and take away. Yeah, exactly. Cloud-based, you exactly. just take them away. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Is basically you are, we have pre-configured a computer and set that configuration in the cloud. And by a few clicks of buttons, you can add instances or add computers to your processing capability. So as you see, we have already have 15 nodes or processing nodes r running right now. Mm -hmm. I'm actually going to connect and show you that. Okay. And so it looks like you can connect through like a remote desktop session or it's, directly through an IP address? Yeah, it's exactly what it is. So what it does create, give me a little a shortcut to a remote desktop. There you go, login password. Here we go, so here we're logging. We have a lot of things going on. And here you see, okay, let me scroll down a little bit, is you see we have 15 processing nodes running. So it's a one-to-one -one match in between okay. the processing nodes. This and looks like a regular GXL system. It's exact same thing. Okay. So that's you, the user won't see a difference in between the one we have on the rack or on a computer or on the cloud. It's the exact same thing. What we change is under the hood, it's hiding to the user, so it's easier. It's the same thing. It's really same experience for the user. So I'm going to go back to my uh, Amazon console for a sec, and I'm going to start a new instance. I'm going to go there, and I say launch an instance. You can count clicks. So it's one click to launch here. I say one, two to select the computer. In five clicks, that should be done. It usually take up to five to 10 minutes, well, five minutes to have a new computer showing up. Okay. And these, these are like real computers, or like where, where are these physically located? I don't know. That's the beauty of it. I just don't know. Uh, they are sitting somewhere in Virginia, I think. Okay. But they are not real computers. They are virtual machines running on big servers, and they have many running on one computer. Really. Okay. So there you go. I'm done. Maybe 10 clicks. I was maybe... Okay. And uh, if I go back in my instances where I have all my running computer, if I go at the, down, at the bottom, you see that is, I have a test one. It's actually running. So it's, it started, and I have a new computer. And the beauty of uh, the way we set up the GXL in the cloud, the new computer is going to show up directly there. So it's okay. going to be ready to process data. If you, were having, if you were doing stuff, if you were processing, if you were auto-rectifying data or creating a mosaic, and say, oh, I want it to go faster, you add, add instances, and they will pick up it automatically, and so they'll be ready to go. This project um, is for, for Esri. Yes, that's correct. We have been asked by Esri to help them process a huge amount of data, of Iconos data. Like right. it's going to be, uh, we're going to create, at the end, we're going to create a, uh, a world map, a world map uh, of Iconos data. Can you show us you know, how, how the system is being used by Esri? Uh, so yeah, they're, they're submitting jobs. And exactly. So it's it's as a it's a regular GXL system. So you submit a job like you do on your uh, GXL rack or your GXL standalone. But pressing it's everything is web based. So you you click on that link. You have a list of jobs you can do. Mm -hmm. And let's say I want to auto rectify uh, and pan sharpen data. I go there. I fill up the necessary information, and here you go.
So this is some imagery that, that's been processed through GXL you're going yes. to show us? Yes, yes, exactly. So it starts as uh, row scenes, like it's like directory provided by, by GOI, so you recognize the data structure. Mm -hmm. And what we do is we ingest it, uh, which is basically converted to pics, and uh, if uh, reference are source are available, we collect GCPs. That was not the case for that project, but that's something we can do. Mm -hmm. Then we bundle adjust them. That means we take all the scene we ingested and try to f make them fit together so they don't move, move too much. You know? So you, get, you, you, are, you achieve a better accuracy. And you do this all at once, right? So that yes. fewer within yeah, the it's, it's Yeah, the way you can think about tie points is really you take two photos of uh, the same area and you try to find the features, like let's say a building or something, and you put a pin in there. And that way, it's the, the two photos can only move that, that way. You put second pins, they're locked. They can't right. move anymore. Okay. That way, you are sure that they are, and everything underneath is, like, is perfectly uh, matched together. Right. That's what it is, really, what okay. sort of the tie point collection is. When we've done that, we auto rectify them and pan sharpen them. And after that, we mosaic, and we end up with an end product. And then from, we from, there, from there? Or? Yeah, we tell them. And then as we took over, we process them so it's uh, available for their online services. So I got everything has been processed. It's, t it's this uh, to collect. So it's like 72 files, which are equivalent to 300 scenes, 300 icon scenes, roughly, more or less. So this is uh, the last step we're doing before uh, mosaicing, before the end product. So you get a little preview of what your mosaic is going to look like. So it's always nice to be able to see the full project and look like problematic areas and maybe rework them manually. And when you're satisfied with the quality, just launch uh, the processing. So you can preview what it's going to look like before you commit to actually yes, doing the full mosaic. Yes, exactly. So this is what you're doing here. Exactly. I'm, I'm launching Focus and we'll be able to see what it looks like. Right. So that's what looks the end product. So you see we have some holes, but that's what the data was. We didn't have a full There's coverage. No exactly. So I can zoom in and see, you see it's pretty good. It's pretty good looking. Uh, so this is all happening in the cloud. Now, what if you had multiple people that wanted to do QA? How would you handle that? Usually what you do is uh, we, we slice, because those mosaics are too big, like they are a couple of terabytes. So you, anyway, we're going to slice and dice it into tiles. Uh, it's a more reasonable size. So each QA people could work on his own uh, tiles, set of tiles. And to do that, you, uh, you set up a QA machine that we have in the system, and you launch new instances, and everybody you work on these scenes or installs separately and save everything. Uh, so that's really a very good looking mosaic. Actually, I'm going to show you where we, uh, so to, to do a mosaic, what you do is you take different scenes and you cut to try to minimize uh, the visual effects of the different scene, and you mm -hmm. change the colors a little bit. And you can zoom and pan and trying to find for the cut lines, you won't see it. So it's seamless. It, it's seamless. Well, sometimes, like when there is seasonal difference, you're gonna see the difference. You're gonna see the difference. Right. Like snow, no snow. Snow, no leaf snow. Leaf off. Yeah, exactly. Uh, s summer versus uh, spring. Like it's you, you're gonna, probably gonna see that. So, for example, so that's the red. The red lines are the cut line we 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 done. So, right. If I toggle them on and off. It's not always easy to see the difference. Try to find where it is. Yeah, seamless. Yeah. Exactly. Well, thanks a lot, Guillaume. That was oh, a great demo. Thank you. And uh, thanks for joining us on PCI Tech TV. We'll catch you next time uh, for some more tech tips and uh, new product information.